Well, hello, everybody. I'm Will Kosak, and welcome to another episode of the Oncology Data Advisor podcast. We're here live at the ASCO conference on a Sunday morning. I'm here, uh, you know, excited to be joined by my guest, Arjuna Devi. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having us here. I'm glad to be part of this podcast. Thanks so much, Ranjana. And uh, just for some context, Ranjana is uh, a VP of product at, at Oncology, uh, at Cure AI. Um, and so before we go into the uh, podcast episode for today, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your role with Cure AI. Sure. So my name is Ranjana Devi. I am coming from India. So uh, Cure.ai is a company based out of India, headquartered in Mumbai. And uh, I'm working in the product division as vice president for oncology. Uh, yeah, that's about me. Uh, awesome. And, um, you know, thanks so much for, you know, uh, flying all the way just to make it to ASCO and, and for doing some of the work that you're doing. Um, tell us a little bit about Curiai and the mission and, and some of the recent initiatives that, that Curiai is working on. Sure. So Cure is a, Cure.ai is a health tech company and uh, we've been completing and developing uh, deep learning and artificial intelligence models that can help uh, that can make the healthcare more accessible and equitable for patients worldwide. So we take pride in what the, the work we do, the kind of models we develop. And uh, so far, I think uh, it, it gives me immense pride and pride to be representing Cure.ai because uh, our real world experiences, we have been deployed in almost 2700, more than 2700 sites in 90 plus countries. With that rich experience, we have um, trust coming from global institutions and partnerships coming from commercial deployments and uh, high esteemed clinical research collaborations be it with AstraZeneca um, and also we've been working with more than uh, 25 NHS trusts, uh, NHS hospitals in UK um, and more uh, so yeah uh, that's about Cure.ai's overview and uh, what we've been doing uh, yeah Awesome. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited to hear some of the updates in ASCO in terms of the Lung Cancer Consortium and some of the things that Curie.ai is working on that standpoint. So tell us a little bit about the Lung Cancer Consortium and some of the new uh, sort of models that are being developed there. Definitely. So uh, when you look at lung cancer, uh, the biggest problem, why we picked this cancer is also that uh, it's the most common cancer in terms of absolute numbers, the prevalence of it, about as I think Globacon statistics stated about 2.5, uh, 2.48 million cases. It's the most common and also the most deadliest because the number of deaths is also highest for lung, lung cancer with about 1.8 million deaths happening worldwide. Um, so the question is why is the incidence higher and why is the de death rate is also very high. So the highest mortality rate uh, is because of the poor survival rates because lung cancer detects it, is getting detected in the later stages and in advanced stages. So as a technology partner, naturally we are trying to understand how could we uh, work at a grassroots level to bring early diagnosis of lung cancer happen. And uh, that's exactly what our AI solutions are aiming towards. Our AI solutions are powering efficient uh, detection and clinically validated detection mechanisms to identify, measure, monitor and manage end-to-end -end lung cancer uh, portfolio. So uh, that's about the products that we are developing and how our products are shaping the shape for the lung cancer uh, portfolio. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, and especially with the rising you know, incidence of cancer, um, of, of lung cancer, even even with decline in the amount of smoking that people are doing, there's an increase in population, and of course there's an increased uh, you know, population of people who have never smoked before who are getting lung adenocarcinoma, so definitely um, you know, international disease that needs an international company and effort to really tackle it. Tell us a little bit about the performance of Cure.ai in terms of lung cancer, any other cancers you want to highlight? Sure. Um, so, recently, uh, Cure.ai has bagged its 13th FDA clearance, which was for the lung nodule detection model. So uh, the lung nodule detection model was basically we are the only FDA company to be uh, able to detect chest X-rays uh, nodules, l suspected pulmonary nodules on chest X-rays as small as 6 mm. So practically a lot of clinicians who might be hearing this podcast would be like 6 mm nodules, 8 mm nodules, they're not visible on x-rays. But we're groundbreaking with our research by pairing chest x-rays with CTs and training the AI models to pick them as many smaller nodules as possible. And we got FDA clearance for just that. And uh, uh, picking those smaller nodules is an implication that we are incidentally picking nodules coming, uh, uh, incidentally picking up patients who are coming for chest x-rays for uh, for other reasons and we're flagging them to the lung cancer pathway and 
making those patients because we're catching the smaller nodules right. we're getting um early stage lung cancers as well uh, a pro like a correlation to that level right uh, so that's about the fda clearance and uh, with respect to the performance right uh, we have completed validation studies because we deployed across 90 countries we have multiple validation studies across sites we have shown sensitivity of about 92 as much as 97 percent in detecting uh, nodules without increasing the specificity or without having a high false positive rate as well which is i think uh, uh, something to something that most of our users who are using uh, our, our our product to help them help them assist with the nodule detection they do agree with the uh, numbers that i'm quoting uh, our our recent study which is going to uh, get published soon it was a multi-reader multi-center mrmc uh, study that is going to get live soon there we have shown almost 30 to 40 percent of the nodules that are missed by radiologists with the help of ai they are able to pick up almost all of them so that that's that's the kind of uh, product prowess we have when it comes to developing the core AI models, yeah. So it sounds like we can use AI to really do a better job of detecting lung nodules at an earlier setting. I think the next gap that we have to address is making sure that patients have access to screening and that we're actually able to do the do it on patients. I, I work in a primary care clinic and one of the challenges is trying to find the best patients where possible to do lung cancer screenings because even if someone's a former smoker and they smoke for a long time, they might not be the best person to get an annual CAT scan, right? In their 60s or 70s, might not be worth the hassle. Um, I can say myself, I had a bronchitis episode a few years ago and I only had one x-ray in my life, right? So what are some of the challenges of lung cancer detection and screening? NLST Nielsen trials have been able to significantly show that lung cancer screening with low dose CTs is going to reduce the mortality rate, no questions. It, they're, they're the gold standards in terms of the studies that were conducted. But when you look at the implementation of lung cancer screening in US, uh, as per the latest guidelines, I think 17 million Americans are roughly eligible for screening, but the uptake is less than 500k, uh, 500,000 Americans are so far screened. And I was roaming in ASCO with a uh, few of the oncologists and pulmonologists here and they mentioned that not a lot of them actually come back again. Even they are part of the, they are enrolled in the screening program, but the follow-up CTs are not happening. So I think that's a major gap there in terms of having a very good solution, but there's no uptake of lung cancer screening. So, and look at chest x-rays. I think um, USA Medicare alone takes about uh, 30 million chest x-rays. Um, I think in USA it's roughly around 80 million chest x-rays that are taken specific to US. Um, if these chest x-rays, AI is run in the background and we can flag the smaller nodules and then put them into the lung cancer pathway as a pre-screen, identify and put them into the pathway. I think that kind of a solution and bridging that gap, understanding what could be the workflows, what could be the operations of scaling this, right? I think that's 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 what um, I as a product manager would like to solve for and get more patients into the pathway as soon as possible and detect more early lung cancers and thereby increase survival and reduce mortality rate. Right, definitely. No, that, sound, that sounds amazing. Definitely definitely a goal to aspire for. I know we talked a lot, a lot about lung cancer today, but are there any other sort of cured out AI platforms or tools you want to highlight for the audience who might not be as definitely. familiar? Yeah. Definitely. So, um, current challenge is detecting more nodules, but once you detect those nodules, the implementation challenges, other challenges in the operations of lung cancer, screen, lung cancer is that there are a lot of patients, nodules are also getting detected and reported, but not everyone is getting followed up. So you need a really good management tools so the, and that help nurse navigators and nodule clinics to ensure that those patients are followed up on, understand what are the nuances as why the patients are falling and create, and I think technology plays a major role here right. to ensure a very seamless and integrated solution that could be a win-win to both patient and the clinician. Um, that's one. The other one would be uh, risk stratification on the CTs, right? The low dose CTs, or generally, if there's a suspected nodule patient, you would want to rule in benign, rule out the benign nodules, and rule in the high risk nodules as accurately as possible. And one metric or one biomarker there on the CTs is the measurement of the volume, 
right uh, and it could be a tds and increasing screening and increasing all these opportunities in incidental you would see that the radiologist would be burdened calculating or segmenting the nodule so monitoring of the uh, measuring the nodules could be a very good um, product for from ai that could contribute uh, to accurate ruling in of high risk and ruling out of uh, low risk nodules right so that is one and recently this is all on the diagnosis side of things but once the treatment once a patient is identified as lung cancer or any cancer for that matter the response to treatment uh, fostering the clinical trials fostering the patient outcomes looking at the patient outcomes in real time and taking decisions right i think we have a very good i mean it's a validated solution the resist uh, score that is generated for patient response tumor assessment uh, if we could automate tools for that uh, so we're working on that which we call as manage um, so the auto resist tool uh, we we developing in partnership with project data sphere which is an ngo initiative by the uh, ceo round table right uh, so we're looking forward to developing this and advancing the treatment making precision treatment as as much as possible yeah well cool. thanks so much for sharing a little bit about the lung cancer consortium and some of the things you're working on are there any other credit ai highlights you want to share up with asco or anything else you're working on in the next coming months definitely i mean um you'd soon see a lot of prospective and high quality studies that will be coming up from cure uh, very recently at the nature's article uh, dr david balwin's statement about uh, one of our studies under sbri grant uh, where it is called out as the most um, to be the study has to be looked into because this could mean a lot of nuances for the uk health market as well so looking forward for that and thank you for giving me this opportunity yeah of course congratulations on all the success and uh, thanks so much for taking time to interview with us Right, that's all for today. Thank you.